Over the last two years, the United Sorghum Checkoff has put a lot of resources into sugarcane aphid management. We've funded numerous studies across the U.S. Uh, looking at sugarcane aphid. Uh, various, various research topics have been covered. And then we've also put together a lot of information just from an educational standpoint. This is going to be a series of seven, seven videos where we're highlighting different topics for sugarcane aphid management. Uh, this particular video will look at tolerant versus susceptible hybrids. Well, there's clearly differences in, in, in hybrids when it comes to having some resistance to the sugarcane aphid. Uh, this particular slide or, or, or picture that I'm showing uh, has two different hybrids, both very good hybrids, uh, but, but the one is susceptible to, to the sugarcane aphid, and then the DK3707 uh, actually has pretty good tolerance to the aphid. And you can see the differences in the leaves and just the appearance of the crop. You know, the one clearly is showing some tolerance to the aphid. And what happens with the, to with the tolerant uh, hybrids is the sugarcane aphid just multiplies much slower on those hybrids. Uh, so you may still have to end up spraying, uh, but it should buy you time. So that's really the key. Uh, so maybe instead of having to, to spray twice, you're only spraying once or maybe you're delaying when that first application goes on, or again, maybe you don't have to spray at all. I do want to point out these tolerant hybrids are not immune, and you still may very well have to spray for the sugarcane aphid, uh, but there's clearly differences when you have a tolerant hybrid right beside a susceptible hybrid. The United Sorghum Checkoff, something that we have been trying to do is maintain a list of those hybrids that we consider to have good tolerance to the aphid. Uh, this is showing the 2016 list that, that we developed. Uh, we will also have a 2017 list that you can find on our website. Uh, but the way we develop this list is we certainly talk to the seed companies and get their input, but then to make our list, those hybrids have to have appeared in some kind of an independent trial, usually with universities where they have shown tolerance. And uh, if the company and the university trials agree, then, then, then that particular hybrid will make this list. Now the seed companies as well as the universities are certainly putting a lot of resources into developing uh, new sources of resistance to the sugarcane aphid. Uh, the companies have been going through and, and screening their current uh, hybrids to determine if they have, have tolerance or resistance. And then they're also looking just for new sources of uh, a resistance. And Texas A&M just recently released uh, two new sources of resistance, this TX3409 and the TK3408. USDA, I think, is, has released four uh, lines that have resistance. And then again, certainly the companies are, are working to develop uh, new sources of resistance. So I really think in the next couple of years, uh, we'll see new hybrids on the market that are much more tolerant uh, to the sugarcane aphid than what we currently have.